Hi, I'm Queen Yu with Bullet Point News. I'm with Canadian radio icon Jeff Woods. Jeff has interviewed legendary artists, including David Bowie, Rolling Stones, Joel Walsh, Rush, David Gilmore, and Jeff Buckley's mom. Besides creating the radio series, The Legends of Classic Rock, and hosting Records and Rock Stars, Jeff is the author of the nonfiction book, Radio, Records, and Rock Stars. Jeff, welcome to Bullet Point News. Thank you. It's good to be here. Nice having you, Jeff. Jeff, what do you love most about radio and music? I love, well, you know, it comes down to the enjoyment of listening to music. That's where it started for me as a little kid, listening to a transistor radio in bed <laughs> late at night, trying not to wake up the family. Uh, the song, the song is everything. <laughs> You'll be in Stouffville on Saturday, January 21st at 3.45 p.m. for a conversation with Tamara Williamson at 19 on the Park Theatre. Give us a taste of what you would like to share with everyone that afternoon. Well, you know, I feel privileged to be on the other side of the table, as it were, because I'm usually the one interviewing um, artists. And this time, as you know, the artist will interview me. So that's a, a rare and fortunate position for me. And uh, Tamara has said that uh, she's digging into the book I wrote that you noted from 2016. And, uh, and there's a couple of dozen interviews with bands in there. And I know she's a huge fan of a lot of the artists with whom I've spoken, uh, David Bowie among them. So my hunch is that uh, she will have questions about a lot of those conversations that I had over the years around the world with, with, with rock stars. And I'm excited to, to share the you know, revelations that those artists shared with me. Um, many of them were, were um, oftentimes the first time they'd shared things. For example, uh, years ago, I interviewed Angus Young, the guitar player from ACDC. And it was funny because across from me, he was in the middle. The record rep was to the left of him and his wife was to the right. I'd never had that scenario before where I was facing three people in an interview, two of whom were just there as bystanders. And Angus got very emotional, which was rare, about the singer before Brian Johnson. Bon Scott was the singer in ACDC, and Bon passed away in 1980. And we were talking about him, and Angus got choked up, and tears fell from his eyes. And his wife pulled me aside after, and said that had never happened before. And she thanked me for, you know, coaxing out of him this deep and profound emotion that he hadn't um, expressed in years. So that's the sort of thing that I, I hope to share with the audience on Saturday in Stouffville. Some people get intimidated by famous people, but you know that famous people have a vulnerable side as well. What was one important lesson you learned from them when they showed their vulnerable side? But just, just like you said, um, they are people too, just like you and I in terms of uh, how they think and feel and, uh, and, and how they are in the world. It just so happens that they became famous through their music. What I learned most about um, artists I've interviewed over the years is that they feel, generally they feel really fortunate to have been... Um, given the light that has been shone upon them because the overarching theme and commonality am among all the artists is that they feel like there's so many artists that are more deserving of the success that they've had because they got lucky. That's the way they feel. They got really lucky. It's like uh, spinning a wheel and, and just so happens it landed on their name uh, or their number came up as it were. So humility is the greatest commonality among the great artists of our time. You've interviewed many legendary artists. How did you feel interviewing them? Well, I got really lucky, too. I mean, as a kid growing up listening to the radio, um, I never imagined as a 12-year-old that I would be uh, talking to Jimmy Page and, and, and Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin or talking to Pink Floyd or the Rolling Stones or... All of them, really. Um, so it was a privilege to get to do that. And, uh, and I looked at it that way ever since. I still talk to bands. And whether they're well-known or unknown, 
it's always a privilege to get people to open up and, and share what they've created and share how they feel about it. Um, it's what I love to do most. Anyone with a large following such as yourself is in a position of great influence. You can encourage people to think about how they can improve their lives and make positive changes in society. What would you like your audience to think about? What a great question. I don't think anybody's ever asked me that. Thank you. Um, I just like people to think about this. When someone rubs you the wrong way, before you react, think about the fact that what they have to say to you says a lot more about them than it does about you. And what I mean by that is they may be having a really tough day. People are going through things that we can't even imagine. Or maybe we can. Think about the worst day you've ever had or the toughest thing you've ever faced and imagine that that person is going through that right now and, and, and have compassion before you have a reaction that is, is potentially harmful or that you'll regret. Um, or if it's really bad, just walk away. I'd like people to think in those terms. What advice would you give to a young person who wants a career in radio and follow in your footsteps? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> if it's in you, if it's really in you and it's eating you up and it's consuming your thoughts and you really feel like somehow you were put on the earth to do a thing, maybe get into radio, give it your best shot. Why not? What have you got to lose? The other side of that coin is you could always change your mind if you get in and, you, and then you're, you're disappointed with it's not the way you thought it would be or it's not as much fun as you thought it would be or it's just not for you. Change directions. You're young. You can do another thing. I've done so many different things. I've always come back to radio because it just works for me. But if it didn't, there's other things to do. So. Give it your best shot, but don't feel like you have to stay in it if it's not working. What do you think is needed to have a successful career in music or media? The thing I think you need most to have a successful career in music or in media or really anything, because, you know, we think we're unique in the music and in the radio business, and we are somewhat, but no matter what it is, I think the thing you need to uh, have, the thing you need to possess is, um, is courage, is, um, is dedication, is ambition. But more than anything, it's authenticity. You be you. Don't try to be anybody but you. That's the key to success is your unique place in the world is your greatest asset. Never stop learning, never stop growing, never stop reading, never stop improving. But at the end of the day, continue to be you. So many young people are on social media and they compare themselves with other people. But you're talking about the importance of authenticity. Talk about that more. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's easy to, it's easy to, well, the comparison, you know what they say, comparison is the thief of joy. It, it can be if you're always looking at what you don't have and what others have. Uh, gratitude is the number one thing, I think, for all of us to consider. Um, wake up in the morning, think about what you have. Focus on the things that you have, the things you've accomplished, the things, the opportunities that face you in a day. Don't think about what you haven't gotten yet, whether it's um, monetary, um, um, possessions, um, experiences. Focus on the things you have and then proceed to go and get the things you desire to have. Um, gratitude is super helpful. It may sound a little corny, but trust me, it works. The Winter Song Music Festival is taking place in Stouffville on January uh, or January 20th to the 22nd. Why is it important for people to attend? It's going to be fun. There's so many artists that you get to see. There's so many people that you get to uh, witness, experience, um, have a connection with. Uh, it's great to get out of the house. I mean, I look out the window here from my 
studio in the Blue Mountains of Ontario, which isn't too far from Stouffville. And it's a gray day, and uh, sometimes it's just easy to stay in the house and cocoon away in the winter, as it were, to hibernate. But uh, I always feel better when I go out and interact with people. And uh, Winter Song is a great way to do it, because not only do you get to hang with like-minded folks, you get to witness some great music. So come out and enjoy, and come see us Saturday afternoon, too at the session I did with Tamara Williamson, who's also a great singer, guitar player, songwriter. I think it'll be fun. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us at Bullet Point News. It's kind of you to, uh, to welcome me, and I thank you, too.